Yes, we are off. Can't actually see. I've got um, big flashes in front of my eyes. We've had the doors open today. It's been absolutely gorgeous day, really warm. And we've had the doors open in the kitchen and the ceiling is now not covered, not in an unpleasant way, not like some other horror film, but there are loads of flies in the kitchen and they're all hovering around the spotlights. I've been trying to smack them with the um, tea towel and I've just been looking at the lights too much and I've just got disco lights in front of my eyes all the time. So you're there, right, okay. So uh, Friday, Friday, awful week, really bad week. If anybody knows of any jobs going around Yorkshire area, please do let me know because I really, really need a new job. Um, Regardless, let's crack on with some whiskies to start the weekend. So, um, two tonight and two both donated by Mr. X, of which this first one is another Highland, uh, and this is Blair Athol. Now, this bottling is an older one. It's a sealed uh, miniature, but the fill level is not ideal, but still pretty good, so I think we should be all right. And it's actually quite difficult to get hold of Blair Athol as a single malt whiskey anyway. It was um, uh, founded in 1798 <clears throat> by a guy called Berry. His parents must have spent ages thinking up this name, Robert Robertson. And um, he was originally named Aldor, um, which was named after the water source that went through the estate where the distillery was set up, called Outdoor, um, A-L-L-T, Dor, D-O-U-R which um, is Gaelic for Burn of the Otter. And um, it was expanded in 1825, and at that point it was then renamed Blair Athol. Now Blair Athol, this is where the distillery is, and Blair Athol is a village just like a couple of miles away from it, just outside Pit Lockery, which is um, home to Edredow, and um, which also Edredow probably means something to do with otters or burns, whether dower is otter or burn, I don't know. Um, so, um, yes, so that it was renamed and it was Blair Athol. Now, Blair Athol, the village, is actually spelt with two L's, whereas the whiskey itself, as you can see on the label, is spelt with one L. Why? No idea. Um, changed hands a few times. Um, basically, Robert Robertson um, lost money. It has had a couple of sort of individual owners until it shut down in 1932. Now, kind of around that time, the early 1900s was difficult for a lot of distilleries. There was a recession, there was world wars going on left, right and center. And it was a really, really hard time. So it shut down into 1932. And in 1933, it was bought by Arthur Bell and Sons of Bell's Whiskey fame. But they didn't actually reopen the distillery until 1949. Um, they, they kind of rebuilt it, not quite from scratch, but they just seen Chavo. There's a fly buzzing around up there in the spotlight. Bastard things. Um, so yeah, so it didn't reopen until 1949. Um, you know, stuff going on in the world at that time anyway. So uh, probably people's minds were elsewhere. Uh, and it became quite a core component of Bells. Now, Bells is now owned by Diageo, as which is the as of which as which is, as is, as is. The distillery is still owned by Diageo now. And Diageo, um, a bit like Glen Turret, is the home of the famous grouse. And as I did with, crap, what did I do yesterday? What did I do yesterday? Day before, which one was it? Not Anok. Aberfeldy. Aberfeldy is like home to um, Dewars. Um, Blair Athol is sort of officially the spiritual home of Bells because they you know it's a blended whiskey and Bells uses Kalina and all sorts of stuff so it was one where you know Blair Athol is a distillery it's got a um it's quite touristy it's, it's quite friendly to tourists um not friendly like a lot of distilleries are just sitting there going you get out we don't want to see you it's not like they're not like that but um it's it's more of a tourist attraction it's very picturesque but um it's one of those where they've not done it as you know the, the bells world of whiskey or you know the bells experience or the bells universe or anything like that but the blair athol is the spiritual home of bells so the blair athol that they make at that distillery the single malt that goes into bells blend is um matured in bourbon casks but the single malt releases that there are and there's not many there's not really an official bottling there was the it was part of the flora and fauna range which were sort of semi-official bottlings but there isn't a Blair Athol standard 10 year old or whatever out there. Um, but any single malts that are released are matured in cherry casks. 
So this particular one was uh, bottling, this labeling was released in the 1980s, so that dates this miniature. So it is, you know, this is a pretty old miniature. Um, and um, with the Whiskey Exchange, have got this as a 70 CL listed at 150 quid. So this miniature, very, very kind of you to send me this, uh, Mr. X, because this could probably go for about 20 quid. But it's the only representation of Blair Athol I've managed to source. So I'm, I'm cracking it open now. And there's probably some people out there going, you could sell that for 20 quid and put it to charity. Yeah, I know, I could actually, but the challenge hopefully will raise even more than 20 quid. So, there's some stickers on it. I don't quite know why Mr. X has got colored stickers on some of these miniatures that he sent through, but it's not all of them. And I don't think it's some kind of code. Anyway, so this particular one is an eight year old. Uh, it's 40%. Don't know why they've written it twice on. And it does even say on the label, from the house of Bells, distilled and bottled in Scotland by Arthur Bells and Sons. So they are really sort of pushing that uh, that line, as you would, because Bells is a really big brand. And it's not really a surprise that Blair Athol is um, difficult to get hold of as a single malt, because it's such a large constituent of Bells as a blend. And Bells is a massive brand. So, you know, why bother taking some of your stock away from what would be going in the bells to using to go for a single malt that not as many people are going to buy. So, not a bad golden colour actually. It looks a little pale and it's a little bit thin around the edge. Now, there was a bit of a low fill level. I don't think it's going to be as bad as the Glentorite where a lot had um, evaporated and the um, Aberfeldy. A bit of that had come out, um, but I, th I think that was still drinkable. But I think this is probably a fair representation, even though this is technically 30 years old. It's got a nice nose on it, actually. There's a slight spiritiness to it, but I don't really, I think it's supposed to taste like that. I don't think it's a fault of anything to, to do with the miniature itself. There's a very, very mild sweet peatiness, but it's really distant and it's really, really sweet. And there's a nice toffee character to it as well. It might be a little bit affected. It's got a, it's got a prickliness to it, which doesn't quite feel right. And there's a slight woodiness as well, which isn't, the Aberfeldy had that slight woodiness, but it balanced it out quite well. This is just a little bit too much of a coarse woodiness to it. I wonder whether it's just almost like turned slightly. But there's a good, there's, there's a nice malty character to it and it's a real kind of malty toffiness. It's, it's like um, oval tea, malty hot drink. I don't know if, uh, anybody outside of the UK that's watching this might not have come across Ovaltine um, but it's a lovely sort of smooth multi character and um, Ovaltine do like a chocolate version which is not obviously chocolatey and it is almost like a toffee-ish toffee, toffee chocolate character to it and it's got elements of that in here it's quite pleasant there's just this slightly overriding element of wood that's and it's a dry woodiness as well that doesn't balance very well and I don't think that's the fault of the whiskey when it was put into the bottle I actually think it's just the age of the miniature itself that has evaporated not a lot but just enough over that time period just to turn the flavor a little bit from where it should be There's still a nice mouthfeel to it. And this maltiness does come through. And there is a slight, very slight smoky peatiness to it. It's almost non-existent. Almost saying it gives it too much prevalence than there actually is. But it's just there in the background and it's balancing out quite nicely. The trouble is, is this, this woodiness just kind of like pushes its way through. And it, it's just kind of spoiling it ever so slightly. Yeah, that one was even more so. That one was more dominating of 
dry wood, dry oak, not even a pleasant woody, oaky, whiskey character. This was more pure dry wood. Bit of a shame that. I think that's just, just marred it very slightly. So hard to get hold of, but I think a very classical Highland whiskey style. You'd be looking at maltiness and, and toffiness and maybe a very, very slightly peated element, but nothing too overpowering. Pleasant, and I think it's just a fault of the miniature. I think it's the age of the miniature and the evaporation that's had in there. I think if you could find a more modern Blair Athol, I think it would be a very, very pleasant whiskey to drink indeed. It's just, they use it for bells, so you're really gonna struggle to find it. Very interesting though, thank you very much, Mr. X. I'm gonna do a quick rinse out and then we should crack on with another one. Right, see you then, cheers.